Well, welcome everyone. Um, so today I'm going to talk about Kotlin C interop. What is this all about? So Kotlin is a wonderful language, but what if you have existing native libraries in C or C++ on Linux, Mac OS, whatever system you might be running, and you want to access those from within Kotlin without having to actually write C code to use them. This can be helpful for things like TensorFlow if you want to interop with the TensorFlow C++ library. Uh, if you want to do some OpenGL game programming, this is a useful tool for that. So I'm going to talk about two ways to do this. There's Kotlin Native and Kotlin JVM. Uh, we're going to start with Kotlin Native here first and then go into JVM. The native version we're going to find is a little easier to work with C interop with, whereas the JVM version, we have to do a few extra things. Uh, we have to dabble a little bit in the C code, um, but we won't dabble into that too much, I promise. All right, to begin with, uh, let's create a simple hello world library in C. It's not going to be very complex. Uh, for those of you who don't know, in C you have to have a header file and a C implementation file. A header file just defines the signature of the function, which in this case is basically saying we're going to have a function here called hello that takes a string in, which is called name, and we're going to return a string value back. Now we create our reader.c file to implement this. And again, I'm going to kind of skip over the C code here um, since it's a Kotlin talk. But Basically, this is going to concatenate hello, comma, your name, and dots. Just want to keep this C example very simple, just to kind of see more about the dynamics of what's going on. So once we have these, the last step is we need to compile it. So we run the GCC command down here. We pass in our greeter C at the end. Um, you'll notice we have the dash o lib greeter dot dy lib. If you are creating a shared library on Linux and Mac OS, it's important to keep note that the dylib has to be, the, be there for Mac OS. I tried doing the Linux compile uh, extension of .so on Mac, and I spent literally two hours figuring out why my code would not load this. So extensions are important for shared libraries. The other options here, shared and fpick. Shared just tells the GCC compiler we want to actually use a uh, shared library and not like a static library or anything else like that. Uh, and then fpick is basically stands for position independent code. Not going to get too much into that, um, but it is typically an option you want to use on the GCC compiler these days. So that creates our shared library. So why do we want to use Kotlin Native? Well, it's great because we can get rid of the JVM. Uh, maybe we're running this on embedded devices, Internet of Things. Uh, if you want to do, again, any kind of like game programming or something like that, it'd be great to skip past the JVM if at all possible so that we can use those CNRAP libraries directly. It's a lot easier doing systems programming. Uh, if you have system libraries, you're going to use Golang, go for it. I personally don't so much like Golang. I prefer Kotlin over Golang. So we can now do system programming with C interop using Kotlin Native. It's another reason to want to, if you want to do that kind of stuff, to use Kotlin Native. So step one for this, we've, we've created our shared library. To actually port it into Kotlin Native, step one is we want to create this depth file. Uh, this definition file just basically tells C interop, which is a tool that JetBrains created for Kotlin Native, that this is our shared library, here's where it lives, some additional details about that. We'll take a look at that in a moment. Once we have that depth file in place, we want to run C interop on it. That'll create another file called libreader.klib, which is a Kotlin Native shared library uh, that we then pull into our Kotlin program. Uh, we Im import this klib, and it just immediately becomes accessible to us. All right, so here's a libreader file, the definition file. Up here on line one, you'll see we have package equals greeter. This correlates directly to in your Kotlin program where you would import stuff. That's the package name. The headers on line three specifies the .h file that we had created for our shared library earlier, which defines the function signature, which again becomes necessary for C interop to know like what functions live within this shared library. Lines five and six are basically additional compiler options that tell Kotlin Native uh, through C interop where our library actually lives. Now typically you would have this stored under user local lib. Depends on the system you're on. You'd have to check into that Linux versus Mac OS. There are specific like, hard-coded places. You can change that around if you want, but that's the typical thing here for Mac OS. 
And you'll notice on line five and six, I've got compiler ops and linker ops dot OSX. The nice thing about this is JetBrains provides a way for us to have a single dev file and automatically have it support multi-platform with Kotlin native across different OSs with that, that OSX extension. You could also use dot Linux on there if you wanted to. So let's go ahead and compile this to create our Klib file. So we run cinterop, we pass in the dot, uh, dash def option with our def file on the left, and then we specify dash o for out, and we get our libgreeter.klib. That libgreeter.klib will have a reference back to our original shared library that we want to use. So let's use this thing now. As I mentioned earlier, that package directive that we had is up there. We have in line two, we have import greeter.star. That's just going to pull in all of the functions from that shared library. And you'll notice on line one, we have import kotlinx.cinterrupt.star. This is useful for pulling in a bunch of methods within the Kotlin native cinterrupt environment that we might want to use. For example, this dot two k string on the end, you'll notice on line five. It's just our standard main function in Kotlin. When we run our hello function on line five, right here, let's see if my mouse shows up. I don't know if you can all see the mouse, but we have a uh, dot 2k string on the end of this because this is nullable type because this call is actually going into the C library at that point in time. That C library might fail, and Kotlin knows that. So it returns all of these as nullable type. So we need to actually uh, check for that and then also cast it to a k string because in the C world, strings are handled differently. They're a different type entirely than what Kotlin knows about internally on the JVM or in native for that matter. So that's important to have there. Finally, we can compile this. We run our Kotlin C native compiler. And again, here we're passing out. These are pretty standard options for the GNU C compiler as well. They kind of port over to Kotlin C native. We run uh, dash o hello here, which is just the output of our final executable program that we're writing on the left. The dash l option here for libreader.klib basically tells the Kotlin native compiler where our actual shared library for Kotlin exists, Kotlin native. So we pass that in there. The linker options points us to the native library that's in C. That's the original native library that has the hello defined. So we need to pass that in through linker options. It's a little bit crazy here what's going on. So quickly, on three and four, you might be wondering what's the difference there? Why do we have these two things? dylib is our C native library. Three, for klib, is actually a generated native Kotlin class that wraps around this dylib file. So we need both of those in place. Four is going to actually execute against the shared library. And three is actually looking up the translation of that Kotlin wrapper around the native library. And of course, the nice thing about CNROP is that it does all of that translation for us. We don't have to do any additional work. All right, let's talk about JVM. JVM is a little bit of a different story. So we have our original libreader.dylib shared library that we created in C. When we go to the JVM, though, we actually have to create an additional shared library again in C to translate between the JVM and the shared library. And we don't have a lot of nice tools like cinterop to do this for us, unfortunately, um, like we have in Kotlin Native. So in the JVM, we kind of have to build some of this stuff out ourselves. It's a little bit extra work, but it's not too bad. And then once we generate this additional shared library in C, we can then load that into our Kotlin JVM project and execute and access all the functions that are in the original shared library. So let's take a look at that. Step one, we're going to create a greeter underscore jni.h. You can call this whatever you want. This is just a pretty standard naming convention. If you're doing this, just add underscore jni to kind of match and mirror what you're doing in the original shared library. And again here, we have a single function and you'll notice there's a lot going on in this last line here on 7. So what 7's doing is it's saying this JNI export and JNI call and this J string, these are all types that the JVM needs in place to tell it how to actually handle this function. I'm going to skip over most of those, unfortunately, due to, due to lack of time. But the important part here is the Java greeter hello, this is a specific naming convention you have to follow when you're doing this. So in this case, 
Java, I'm not sure why they threw it in there. It could have been Java, JVM, something like that. But they call it Java just to designate that this is a JNI function. Greeter and hello. Greeter is actually the name of the class that I'm going to create in Kotlin for JVM that is going to call this function. Those names have to match. So whatever you call your Kotlin class to use this, make sure that's the same thing. The underscore hello is the name of the function itself. That would just go in as a function inside the Kotlin file as well. And then the parameters here, in short, the first two are used for additional context information that JNI needs to pass into this to let you access things, and we'll take a look at that in a moment. And then the last parameter is your JString name. This is the name that we're going to pass in to concatenate. All right, let's go look at the implementation file. This gets even crazier. So same uh, signature that we have here for our function in our header file. I'm going to kind of skip over most of this, but the basic idea is we have to first, on line four, translate the name of the JSTRING that JNI passes in into a proper C style string. That's what line four is doing. Once we have that in name buffer, we can then call in line six our hello function from the native library, passing that in. Store that as hello buffer. And then on line eight, again, this is C, so we have to release memory, unfortunately, when we do these things, so we prevent memory leaks. We go ahead and release that, and then on nine, we're creating a new J string to pull the results and return that. And basically what this is gonna do, the key thing on line six is it's gonna call our original native library and pass that response back. So let's compile this. There's a lot of stuff going on here with the compiler. Uh, in a nutshell, most of these you've seen before. We have dash O to specify we're creating our wrapper GNI library. We are passing in shared and fpic. We're gonna generate a shared library. Lines four and five are the important parts. This is where you have to find where your Java home lives, and you wanna find the include directories. The first include is important. That's where the jni.h is stored, which tells the compiler where to actually find the jni type stuff. The include Darwin, in this case, Darwin is a code name for Mac OS, for those who don't know. You also need platform specific stuff in there, so you have to pass that in. There's some additional platform specific things that go in there. And then 6L Greeter is basically telling it the name of our library. The name is going to be libgreeterjni.dylib, but in the case of this, we're just going to call it Greeter because you actually truncate that stuff off. And I just realized that that should have been Greeter underscore JNI, my mistake on the slide. But that tells it where the binary location of that dy lives, uh, dy lib lives. Um, all right, line seven, we're just telling it what our C file is to actually compile. All right, now that we've got this, shared, this additional shared library to talk to our original shared library, let's go ahead and create our greeter class. As I mentioned before, back on this slide, we have our on line three, Java greeter hello. That has to match our class greeter and our external fun hello on line six. That external keyword is important, it tells Kotlin this is an external function, look for its definition in this load library that we've run up here with greeter JNI. So that in it, we'll just load that library in and then external fun attaches to the actual hello function in that library and now we can use it. So let's open up a main.kt file and in here we're gonna say greeter, we're gonna instantiate that dot hello. And we pass in, in this case, I'm just taking something from main, it's a parameter coming in probably from a command line if you wanted to and run that li uh, native library through the JNI shared library that translates to the original shared library, the pure C shared library. And finally, we can compile this. So if we run our Kotlin compiler here, we have for JVM. Uh, we pass in the include runtime option and dash D to output our jar file. This will create a self-executing jar file and we do star.kt8 here at the end to just say, like, grab both of these column files. The last line just basically executes that with java-jar. And the important point to note here is we have a dash capital D and this Java library path. That tells it the location to our original, or to our shared libraries, wherever those dylib files exist, or .so if you're on Linux.
All right, so going back to the differences between Kotlin native and Kotlin JVM, we basically got at the top here our executables that we're trying to get to. Uh, in order for that to work, we are making calls on the left under Kotlin native to libreader.klib, which gets generated from the, the def file from C interop, which then in turn calls our shared library. On the right, you have a few extra steps. First of all, you gotta run that huge command with Java jar, which is kinda messy. Uh, and then you also have to have this libreader JNI thing, which then calls our shared library. So you have two shared libraries in the case of JNI you have to use, whereas a native really just one. And then of course, you have to actually build these header and C files out to do the translations like we talked about earlier. So, in general, my recommendation would be if you're doing C interop, you kind of want to make sure that you can go with Kotlin native if you can. <laughs> it's a lot easier. This is basically the file you need versus the header and implementation files to do the translation from JNI. That is the end of my talk. Any questions? Yes? For the Kotlin native, um, you had to translate the C type string to the Kotlin string when it was returned, but it didn't look like you had to do any translation from the Kotlin string to the C style string to catch the same language. Interesting point. Yes. So looking into this, uh, Kotlin native will auto cast stuff when you're passing it in, but it does not auto cast on the return, unfortunately. So. Yeah, it was a little frustrating when I ran into that. It's like, why doesn't do this? But any other questions? All right, there's how to find me. Uh, resources on GitHub, take a look at that. Um, I have fully working and compilable code in there. So if you wanna see how this works in more detail, check that out. I'm also po soon posting OpenGL stuff and also Tornado FX native port that I'm working on. Awesome. That should be interesting and maybe a future talk. Um, all, right. all right. Great, thank you so much, Matt.